All right, so check it out. Not being able to give up on my dream of uh, hooking up a display to the humidifier, I uh, went on Amazon and got this. You actually got two of these units for like five bucks, cheap. And that's a 128 by 32 uh, monochrome OLED display. It's got a nice uh, I2C interface, so I don't need a lot of wires to hook up in order to get it running. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was it was a little tricky. The data sheet sucks, sucks the bowels, so, uh, but they had some example code. Of course, the code was for a different microcontroller, but I used that as a base, and uh, I started with that. I replaced the, basically, the, this, you call this code the, uh, where's my freaking mouse pointer? So you call this code, like, the driver for the, uh, the OLED uh, and this driver takes an I2C driver because the OLED is, you know, it's interfaced to an I2C. So I just first I just replace this with something that's, you know, compatible with my Pi Pico, and I uh, got it working. And then you know I did some uh, did some improvements. Now let me see here if I can show you what I mean. The tricky part was the sequence you need to initialize this. And I yeah, I looked at the data sheet, I tried to get it working, but you know, I didn't get it working, and I figured instead of, you know, banging my head against the wall for days trying shit until something sticks, why don't I just, you know, try the the code that they provide? And it did work. But anyways, so the main way that they do things is they write a single byte. So one transaction, one byte. But to do, like, an I2C uh, transaction, you need to send the address, you need to send the command to the uh, the LCD controller and then you send the actual payload byte so to send one to, to write one byte of pixel data you have to sp write three bytes plus some overhead and that's dumb because you can actually write multiple payload bytes in a single transaction so I added that ability and I basically tripled the speed of the, the code that they had provided and uh, the other thing that they provide is a font um, but it's kind of weird uh, so, the font that they provide is this file here. No, it's not that file. Is it that file? It is this file. Yeah, okay. So this is what they provide. It's basically just a big array of byte data. It's a bitmap. It's a true bitmap because every bit represents one pixel. Uh, and yeah, so each one of these represents a glyph. And you write that bit data into memory and you get a pixel the only thing not a pixel a uh, character the only thing that's a problem with this is that this data that they give you isn't really compatible with the way the memory is laid out on this uh, unit so the way it works on this unit is uh, it'd be nice if I could draw but I don't really have that ability while I'm recording in this mode so every byte is a column of pixels which is strange usually you would you, sequentially in memory you know normally when you're working with frame buffer data you might have one byte per pixel or four bytes per pixel and every you know chunk of word information you know this would be your first pixel memory and then this would be your second memory your third memory location your fourth memory location but what we have here is every one bit per pixel this is your first this is your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then this is your ninth bit, your tenth bit, your eleventh bit. It works like that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but if you're if you're quick enough to pick up on my uh, what I'm putting down, then you probably understand how it works. But this information is laid out by rows. So this is the first row, second row, third row. So we actually have to transpose that. So I wrote a C++ program. Uh, to transpose the information that they provide in their CPP file to something that we can use directly. They can directly fire into the memory of the LCD controller. And so this, if you run this program, let me just show you. Went through several iterations, but the final iteration, you run this program, you get this data here, which you see here, five bytes representing five columns. So the, the font is... 5 by 8. 5 pixels wide, 8 pixels tall. That's the font. Fixed width. 
And here's all the characters, basically all the normal ASCII characters are in here. And I just copy and paste that into... Where is it? No, it's right here. Yeah, it's just at the top of this file here. That's the data. And then I have some, you know, functions to write glyphs, to write a character by converting ASCII character code to glyph, and to write a string by, you know, taking a string of ASCII character codes, writing them sequentially into our memory. And there you go, you bobs your uncle, and you got some stuff. So, see here, uh, they have a test screen, just basically a screen of one full buffer of static data. Kind of looks like an interface. So that was what I had for original testing. And then over top of that, you know, I had to, you know, I had to do it to them. 69, 420, all the good stuff. Um, so, program that I have here, the test. I lost my mouse pointer again. Here it is. Uh, yeah, it just does some things, right? Initialize the I2C, initialize the OLED, clear the screen, write the uh, the test screen data, and then write out a string. And also just writing some raw pixel data. Uh, yeah, so if I run this, um, you see we should be here. And then I do press enter, start. I2C done. So it has initialized the I2C. And next thing it's going to do is initialize the OLED. Yeah, OLED init done. Doesn't Initializing the OLED doesn't actually change the contents of the memory. So see, we have same stuff. And then if I press enter again, we clear the OS. The OLED, now we have nothing there. And if I press enter again, I'm not going to, I'm going to show you how it looks when it's rendering. There you go. So you can actually see it rendering the lines. It's not super fast. Uh, there is a speed limit on, you know, I2C. But uh, it's fast enough. It's certainly fast enough for my purposes. Uh, you're not going to run this one at 60 frames per second, but that's fine. Uh, and yeah, and then we do our test of writing a line of text, I believe. Let's get back in here. There you go. Oh yeah, and also the test of writing just those um, eight columns of data. So yeah. I2C thing working good and this uh, the way I wrote this all I wrote it in C although you can use it in C++ because I got this extern C in here um, but yeah I wrote it in C so it should be usable directly you should be able to copy and paste these files into the uh, the microchip compiler for a pick and use them there all we would have to do is change the I2C driver so this would, the implementations for, yeah, for these functions would be different for a pick, obviously. But yeah, there you go. And yeah, so I'm going to have this. I also ordered capacitive touch interface, which is also I2C. And so we're going to be using that for the input. But that's the story for another video. I haven't even gotten that, haven't gotten that hooked up yet haven't gotten the code figured out but we'll do it and once we have that figured out we'll probably try to get it working with the pick and everything's good my last experiment with this guy i believe fried it because it's not working properly anymore so rip and uh rip but yeah just uh, fun stuff and i'll see you later